now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. Hello and welcome to the 632nd episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your substitute host, Seth Vilo. I was about to say Trainer Thatch. Oh my gosh, wow. (laughs) I can't believe it. Stole his show, stole his name, stole his skin even. I was so in character that I was about to just completely mess up. Um, And I am your, as I said, substitute host for this week of the Puckle Podcast. Thatch needed to do some stuff, so he called in. The reserves, and here we are. Yes. I am reserves raspberry. The leftovers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as y'all can hear, I am most assuredly not alone here in the make believe lavender tower. I. Lavender tower, radio tower, tower. <laughs> With me, we've got Uncle Jushiro. Some say. How are you guys? I was. I even told myself this week that I was going to do a some say to introduce you, and I totally forgot <laughs> once I got in here. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Ancient callback. This is, the, by the way, this is the second one today that you made a reference that we're imaginary. I know. And you're convincing me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what can I say? I mean, people ask me when I write an Elvish show, oh, is that a made up language? And I, I respond with, aren't all languages made up? <laughs> and then the linguist over here has a absolute coronary just going <laughs> <laughs> and as y'all heard we've got the linguist linian how you doing hello i'm doing i'm doing all right <laughs> that's good i didn't remind you that all languages are made up yet so just don't think about it easy yeah me not think that's easy <laughs> not think that on a on a kind of weird morning and i've i don't know how y'all's weeks have been but the last several weeks i'd even say the beginning of this entire year has just been absolutely crazy busy for me so it's i am running on a constant state of just fumes really same 2024 came packed yeah it came swinging that's for sure so that's what (laughs) all i can say is i i hope that this was not a preview of the rest of the year (laughs) because right boy it did uh january kind of Kind of sucked. Uh. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing for a lot of people. You know, January was, you know, it sucked for a lot of people, but it, in some cases, mainly like my own example, it didn't suck as much as it was just nonstop right. for some reason. Same here. So Not bad, just you could, like I haven't had a break. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I would also like to apologize to everyone who just was uh, inflicted massive psychic damage with Seth saying nonstop to the exact beat of the Hamilton song. Oh my god, I was going to sing it and I'm like, I need out, please. Just zero, please. Uh. That was entirely unintentional psychic damage. I, I know, so. that's why it hurts. Uh, yeah, it really hey, it took mean, some life, some HP off me trying to not sing it. If the opportunity presents itself to make a Hamilton reference, I'm not throwing away my shot. You know? <laughs> I knew it. I knew that's what you were doing the second you said hey in that smug little voice. Of yours. <laughs> you know me too well. Oh, you could read my, my little. God, that was too perfect. It, it, had I been there, you would have just as soon as you said hey, I would have snapped my eyes to you with that little murderous no. glare. <laughs> It wouldn't have stopped you, but I'd felt like I'd tried. Oh, no, it wouldn't have. And I would have been, I would have liked the fact that you knew immediately what I was doing. (laughs) Oh, that's such a fun thing. Like that kind of thing. And like (laughs) one phrase that's pervasive through my whole family is you always doubt the first like fun thing or the first thing that one of us says to you. You always have to doubt it. For example, my brother one time was at a zoo and he was just standing there you know with the with the person he was at going to the zoo with and he was just saying trivia facts about animals that he was seeing mm-hmm. that were you know how many of them were lies about 70 percent of them okay or or maybe 70 percent of each fact was a lie like 
for example, and and when for a giraffe came out, and anytime I see a giraffe, this immediately pops into my head, and I just laugh. He would turn to uh, they saw the giraffe. He turned to the person with him and was like, "Hey," <laughs> with that same <laughs> the same hey. And did you know that giraffes actually about four and a half million years ago lost the ability to breathe underwater? And they started instead evolving so their necks were <laughs> higher and higher. And that's what caused them to be so high. All right. And the person he was with obviously knew he was just making that up on the spot. But <laughs> but the zookeeper behind it was fuming. <laughs> oh, even better. Even better than the zookeeper the that might have picked him out. Down. Hey! <laughs> hey! Don't talk about my grandma! No, what? no, it wasn't that either. It was it a mother. It was a mother. Oh. Who turned her head around and went, oh, really? <laughs> Kids! And three children oh, turn around no. that she's with. Did you hear that? That giraffes lost their ability to... B and she repeated the fact and the kids were amazed. These are children, and I'm sorry if you're one of them that are listening to this show now for some reason, but you, you now have to unlearn that fact. Wait, wait, and your brother didn't correct it? No, she didn't know. <laughs> she didn't know. Oh my god! Oh, no, <laughs> these poor kids, because of one stupid thing my brother said, are now gonna have to unlearn that fun trivia fact <laughs> later on in life. That's hilarious. <laughs> Imagine them on a first date to the zoo. <laughs> uh. Uh, this is a really off-topic intro, but yeah, we're we're talking Pokemon. <laughs> I made it Pokemon with for a giraffe. I'm sorry. I have to add an addendum if we're talking about lying oh, no. about animals. <laughs> oh, no. So we went to uh, Hawaii. Uh, my mom's from there. We were seeing family, and, and uh, I think it was a funeral, actually. But we were at the beach, and my little sister, at the time, she was like four, five, maybe? And she was scared of getting in the water because earlier at the beach, uh, someone had gotten stung by uh, a jellyfish, a, a little Portuguese man. Award. Okay. It hurts. It's yeah. not that bad. And it was just kind of one blows in it just happened more like me. mana skirmish got it yeah so uh she was she refused to go out into the water it was actually a different beach and okay. so my dad's like it's fine look and he walk up the beach you'll see them they get knocked up onto the sand pretty often mm -hmm. yeah he goes he finds one takes him maybe five minutes he goes look that one he goes that's one of the jellyfish and she goes to freak out and he goes no 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 don't worry that means there aren't any others this one's dead they're territorial oh, oh no Oh, <laughs> so she went in the water oh, no. and did not question it for 20 years in oh. college. <laughs> hmm. They're territorial. <laughs> they don't even, they she barely moved, have eyes. She moved to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, my sister is smart. She right. just never thought about it. Yeah, yeah. And so eventually she's out there and she sees a jellyfish and she sees that it's drifting and remembers hearing the Portuguese man of words. You know, they can't direct. They don't have any motion. And she just goes, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> when it finally clicks, when it finally comes together and you realize something you thought was a true fact from growing up is just not. Just a parent's lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or even like a, a misunderstanding even. I am sure that if you had asked her even like the week before, hey, are jellyfish territorial? She'd be like, no, what are you talking about? But just what? the- Oh, dad. <laughs> Click. Oh, that's funny. Have you ever had any animal facts lied to you, Jashiro? Lies, uh, other than where my pet chicken went, um, <laughs> other than which was, oh, no. uh, dinner. Uh, oh, no. no. <laughs> That's a pretty big one. But I do That's have a, a pretty fun, big one. <laughs> but I have a doof, uh, a funny one where uh, my parents were up in a yacht. Well, it wasn't a yacht. It was one of those smaller yachts. But they were out in one of the islands in Puerto Rico. And my dad or uh, my, my uh, uh, father went out to scavenge uh, to see if everything was safe for them to. They had already anchored. Uh, they're close to the coast in one of the islands, uh, Isla de Mona. And my father saw that there were, um, sea urchins, the spiky ones. 
uh-huh. uh, there. They're, they're territorial. Right. You know? They're very territorial, <laughs> as we all know. And he <laughs> screamed at everyone. It's like, hey, everyone, watch out. They're sea urchins, right? Don't fall. And then he immediately jump and immediately <laughs> got himself stabbed 37 times. <laughs> 37 times? In the feet. Oh, my God. I uh, thought only llamas could do that. So they spend the rest of the day pulling sea urchin needles oh. off his feet. <laughs> and they were in, in, in that, in, 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 just be aware, this is a, um, uninhabited island. There's no oh, hospitals. No. Were, were they like the, were they the, you know, kind of black, really fine ones? Were like the, they were like pencil urchins, were like, you know, really big spikes. It's, no, it was the, the, the black ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little ones? Yep, the little ones that had their, like, needles. Yeah. Yeah. No, not uh, the ones that look like porcupines, though, that those are, like, I mean, really thick. That- I still yeah. don't know which one is worse. Both of them are bad. Both of them are bad, but the little guys uh, aren't aren't poisonous to people. <laughs> that's oh, that's why. Okay. I mean, they didn't go back right to the hot to mainland and the <laughs> hospital. They my, yeah. my dad was like, "No, nah, no, nah. <laughs> we're gonna stay here. We're gonna enjoy we this. this. <laughs> we made it all the way out here. Right? I shed blood on this trip. We're right. gonna- that's exactly <laughs> how it went gonna- down. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you grab your beer." <laughs> Sit uh-huh. down and enjoy it. As he was Pour a beer on as his tears came It'll down his eyes and blood down their feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh well, animal lies are surprisingly actually kind of what our topic's gonna be, so <laughs> stay tuned for that. But I suppose we can uh before we figure out any other weird stories and things that we have to unlearn now, we'll go ahead and proceed from here. On to the news, because there's been a couple of little things that have happened in the last week. So we'll be right back. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, this just in. And welcome back to the news. We have a couple of items that have happened in the last week. First of all, happy late Mewtwo's birthday to all who celebrate. That was February 6th. Yay. Mm. Um, and just in other general news, I think you've got that one, Linian, so yeah. throw it at me. We've got sales data. I'm sorry, I'm the next point, and I'm so angry. Uh, so we've got sales <laughs> data shipped for another one. It's reached 236 Mer Scarlet, passing Gold and Silver's lifetime sales at 27. So that's wow. news. Yeah. That is huge, honestly. Because that's so like the well. line. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a combination of the Switch sold extreme of it, made every games, and got them a Switch. Yep. Um, if we had had a mainline series game, we'd still be chasing that. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if you haven't played Pokemon for a while, I, f- I feel like Scarlet Violet, you know, technical glitches aside, is still very good. Yeah. Like, welcome back to the whole thing. Absolutely. Honestly, Scarlet and Violet would be my favorite game, if it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Same here. For it would sure. be my absolutely favorite if it. Look better and wasn't for all the bugs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of things that uh, cause me you? significant ah. psychic damage, <laughs> hey, Smash Bros. Spirits for Scarlet and Violet have been added. Just for uh, the starters, the Rhydons, the Tropicos. This causes me pain because I thought I was done when they said they were stopping support for uh, stupid Smash Brothers. I went and I got <laughs> every spirit in that game, and now I'm oh, worried man. I've missed some. Yep. Now you have to go look back and see when you stop doing that and see what else they've added. Yep. Yeah, right, this this is going to be my week. <laughs> <laughs> Much like our parents, uh, Nintendo. I, I don't I have still... any more shuffles. This is going to be I a nightmare. I haven't even... I haven't even unlocked all the characters in Smash Bros. <laughs> I'm playing so I decided long. this was going to be the one Smash Bros. Uh, game I'm going to 100%, and I regret it every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, on to a different Switch game. I've got the Scarlet Violet news, and there are going to be Love Disc Raids. Valentine's Love Disc Raids for Experience Candies running from February 12th to the 15th. And there are also... Version exclusives for everyone Oof. raids is what they're calling it, or we're calling it. I'm not sure. Uh, it'll be for the weekend where you can get the Armor Knights, you know, Cerule Edge and Armor Rouge and Ice Q slash Stonejourner spawns, regardless of what version you're playing. Excellent. So if you haven't grabbed those, now is your chance. Because, you know, if you see 
and Ice Cube. Oh, Stone Turner is a right territorial. They're territorial. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why they're they're each territorial to each other. That's the whole concept of version exclusives. <laughs> that's my headcanon now. That's what it is. Like yeah. eventually. Zangoose and Surviper will be version exclusive for that reason. <laughs> they they were initially. Were they really? Yeah, yeah. Scarlet and b- 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 Ruby and Sapphire. Oh my um, gosh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, they were version exclusive. And then they became like soft version exclusives in X and Y, where uh, you could encounter one normie and the other would own horde battles with four of the others. Oh, and yeah. And the four of the others would attack the one who was wrong. See? So you had, it was like an escort quest. See? And then slowly <laughs> like they've just started integrating into the same. I love it. All right, that's the Scarlet Violet news. We've got a couple Go things. Jushira, why, how about you take those? No, absolutely. Shiny Oricolio. Event Carnival of Love. Runs 13 to 15. Also has a bunch of pink Pokemon spawning. And probably allows for the heart cut for Fofro to be accessible during this event. Forgot oh. that uh, Fofro was still a thing because seen it in the main <laughs> right? events. For- I also forgot that Mardi Gras is the 13th. Oh. So, okay. Yeah, that... Checks um, out. That checks out for that time period. So right. cool. That's kind of a cool tie-in. And then Valentine's Day, Enamorous Elite Rates at 12, 1, 5, and 6. And last 30 minutes. These are the raids that can't be done. You gotta get up, Ugh. go out, and actually do this. <laughs> what a monster. I love Enamorous. The more people hate yeah. it, the more I love it. I just... Uh-huh. I love it. Your mm. hatred only makes me stronger. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. Well, that's the Go news, not a whole lot. And we've got a teeny tiny smidgen of TCG news as well. So we've got a new promo card coming out. It's a Cerule Edge with a Pokemon Day stamp. And it'll be given away with purchases on the Pokemon Center website and GameStop and Best Buy starting on February 23rd. So if you were going to grab something from the Pokemon Center website, maybe hold off till then just to get a free, cool little stamped card. That'd be There was a whole animation that they did on the pokemon twitter too of it fighting a dragapult which was really cool so if you haven't seen that anime it absolutely runs over in that yes. animation, and it's hilarious uh it it kills like six dreepy it's fine yeah uh but that is the conclusion of the news kind of a quiet news week but we're leading up to the pokemon day maybe we'll right. get some more by next week's episode or you know we'll definitely have something to talk about at the end of the month hopefully with whatever's coming out then but that I leaves us with the- right? <laughs> something, please. Um, but that does leave us with our little pokey opinion. And that one, from what I'm seeing on here, what Gen 9 Pokemon has your opinion changed on the most, for better or worse? What do you think? Gen 9, that one is an... That's a good question, because I really did love all of them from the get-go. Mm-hmm. I guess the one that I was taken aback afterwards, because it was like, first and ten, first was like, oh, it's adorable. Then it's like, oh, it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. And I already forgot its name, because it's like that. It's the electric rat that has three evolution and, and two evolutions Palmo? in it. Yes. Palmy, Palmo, right. Palmo. That line, I, I thought it was adorable. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that. And as time go and went by, I'm like, I... This is such a boring. <laughs> it, the, I like mm. the gimmick. I like that his little hands are supposed to be like you know the electric uh, revival thing. But uh, it's just other than that, it's just pretty plain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think mine is probably Toad's crew, who I hated, loathed, and despised. <laughs> How could I don't you? like him, but he's just fine. I'm just like okay, you, I feel <laughs> similar to Capsicum, but that just went from mild dislike to neutral. Okay. Okay. I, I, it's not that I didn't like them from this gen. It's that all the ones that I liked, I started out like, yeah, these are great. Nothing I, I didn't really right. But there are a couple things that I'm the worst, and now they're just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. It sounds I... like I'm talking about my stepdad. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm gonna say Skeledurge. I think really because yeah, I was really not on the Skeledurge train when it first came out like first it was revealed and everything. oh I so now you like the him. dumbest okay, okay. thing ever and the evolution line doesn't make sense it kind of still doesn't but as far as like skeledurge and like enjoying using it or whatever i think i've very much warmed up to it and part of that i think is seeing its animation in battle right. like from f- seeing it revealed and fighting and everything but the torch song animation where it just gets a mic out and just screams into it right. jack black style it's really funny, and I like it. And it's bulky, unaware is really cool. It's weird typing. I, I think I've warmed up to it quite a bit overall. I think of of the Gen 9s that 
you know, went from zero to hero. Mm. It's as close to hero as it could be. I think yes. like that. One thing I really like about Skeledrish yeah. is uh, when I saw its, uh, its stuff, it's fine. And then I really, uh, it took me a couple days after I used it a lot. Uh, one sank in, Torch Song. A torch song is a song that a singer uh, a singer sings about uh, still holding a torch or still having a lost love. It's a sorrowful ballad, particularly popular oh. in like, the 60s and 70s. Oh. So it's a pun because it's also fire. <laughs> right. Okay. That helps it even more. That's kind of, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't even bother to look it up. I, yeah, it was one of those wow. things I learned years ago offhandedly. And I was like, wait, that's a thing. <laughs> That's, but that's awesome. a thing. I love that. The the realization of puns. All right. So that is the news. So we're going to move on to the next section where I'm going to quiz these co-hosts on their insane, possibly innate Pokemon knowledge. We'll be right back. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark from the Dunsparce Gang, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And welcome to Trivia. Thank you for the explanation. We're going to jump right into it. So, question number one. Let's pick this one. Let's go. It's from Mully Coffee. Per- forgive me if I pronounced that incorrectly. So, how many rock bug types that also, you know, rock bug, bug rock, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. How many are there? How many rock bugs? You can bugs? list them off if you need. So there's da, 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 Dwebble and Crustle. Right. Shuckle. All right, that's two. Shuckle, yep. Um, do we have a plus or minus on this? Um, I'll give you a plus or minus two. Okay. Um, <coughs> isn't... Hmm. Hmm. There's Cleavor. Yeah, there you go. That's another. Very good. Armaldo, Anorith. Okay, you're at six. Go, 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 go. Uh... I'm going through the generations. I don't think there's anything in Gen (laughs) 4. How many am I at? at? Six? You are at six of them. How many are there? I'm going to say eight so that I have the maximum. (laughs) I am going to... I am going to allow it. I was not going to let you go much farther because there are six. There you go. And you have named them all. Okay. Oh, it's great. So congratulations. You got it exactly right on question one. Huzzah. Hooray. After the first two, I'm like, I could not remember any other. (laughs) Yeah, right. I would have have taken forever to find Cleavor in my brain. Right, me too. I I have just, I've been replaying uh, Legends Arceus, Mm. and I just Mm -hmm. beat Cleavor Uh, this week. Yeah. I need to get a Tornadus in my Legends Arceus if I'm going to potentially do VGC things. I need to get it. What? Goodness. Huh? Okay, that, that's a question later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number two from that Stevie kid. Which letter of the alphabet do the least po- amount of Pokemon names begin with? I will give you this hint. This letter, only three Pokemon have this as their starting letter. I was going to say I, but that is no longer true. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, not anymore. (laughs) Uh, I assume it's an X or or a Zed, no? Uh, That only has two Pokemon? Uh, How many Pokemon would X named uh, uh, names? I can think of Xerneas, I can think of Zatu. Oof, right. That's more, that that alone there are more than four, because I remember the Ultra Beast as well. Yeah. Um, then, then it's not X. Uh, what about C? I know there's Sarude and Saigard. What other things are with Zed? Zigzagoon, Zangoose. Zigzagoon, there we go. That isn't it either. Wow, okay. K. K is one of those letters. Kingdra, Kangaskhan. King no. Right no. Yeah. Well, J. Y? Eveltal? Who else has Y? It might be Y. Um. Eveltal? I can't recall any other one other than Eveltal. 
No, because there's at least one in Gen 2, because they were given a, a, man, a studio mandate where they had to have a Pokemon for every letter so they could sell uh, English alphabet books. Wow. Fun I, fact. Uh, <laughs> but that is a fun I fact. Love that, I though. did not know that. That's awesome. Uh, oh, uh, that, y- uh, y- Yanma. So we also have Yanmega. Okay. J. J is one of those letters that's really uncommon in English. I think they have Jigglypuff. Jolteon. Jumpluff. Joltik. No, it's definitely oh, not there we that. Go. Yeah. It's not I. Oof, it's not this is tougher. Mm hmm. C. Linian's approach is very smart. H. <laughs> Just going through. Right. What about you? Unknown and Umbreon and. Oh. Huh. Umbreon. Urshifu. Urshifu. Oh, but then I there's. I guess Ursa Ring. Um. All oh, right, yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's not T. Not I S, love it not once you get to the fourth when you're like, dang it. Yeah. V. <laughs> v? Vaporeon. Victory Bell. Victini. Venipede. Victini. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's I'm going to have to ask for an uh, answer. I was going to say. You have said he... the letter. Oh, I will give you that. You have said at, at some point in this guessing process, you have said the letter. Wait, who did? I guess Linian did. Probably, I've said most of them. Yeah, <laughs> most of the letters. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Uh, uh. In fact, I would even go as far as to say you listed all three Pokemon that are in that letter. Oh, is it the Y? What? Is it Eveltal? Uh, sure. Because I couldn't y. remember a fourth with the Y. No, because if there's Yanma, there's also Yanmega. Yeah, but that's three. What? What's the fourth one? Oh, I guess Y then. Are you sure? Mm. No, but I, I we're gonna get something wrong. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> that is unfortunately incorrect. <sighs> the answer <sighs> is X. Oh what? no! The first letter we Zatu, ca- Xerneas, and Zerkatry are the three that begin with X. But I thought, oh, because the pre-evolution is not to. I counted the first. Mm-hmm. And I when counted Jushi the f- said, "Oh, that's all of them." I thought there was just another one that he had. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I I automatically <laughs> assumed that Satu and Natu both started with X. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Next up is our Pokedex question, as usual. And here we go. This one's from P. McGee. Woo. It's Heart Gold Soul Silver entry reads as such. It walks around on its tentacles in search of a tree branch where it can dangle down and ambush prey. Who's that Pokemon? Oh. I feel like I've heard this, and it's not something you would associate with tentacles. Right. Um, yeah, it sounds like a plant. A plant, or um, weirdly the thing that came to mind was um, Pineco. Also, or Tangela? Okay, yeah. Ta- Tangela is definitely... An option, but it always talks about like vines and stuff. That is like, yes, true. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Like that's true. It doesn't talk about it as tentacles. It's vines. Also, I feel like I'm going to uh, get extremely. Obje- I'm going to ex- object extremely heavily to uh, their definition of tentacle. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think you are. Um. Yeah, you Gen are. 4? You're definitely going to hate that. No, this is. It's hard gold soul silver. Oh, then it is. So Jeff. Gen four, yes. Oh, can it be Tangrowth? No, because that doesn't have... That's way too heavy to hang. It's like 300 pounds. Right. Um, what are other... Ferrothorn, I know they hang. No, that's Gen 5. I don't think oh. any bugs that have tentacles. I think we've oh. named... Um, Victory... Oh, Victory Bell kind of has that leafy thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's more like a one tendril. It wouldn't be a tentacle. Yeah, but it, it it's in the... That's a ground... Uh, as in not the type, as in like it lives in the ground because it's like a, a Venus about... flytrap. Well, oh, well, yeah, v- Carnivine. Oh, yeah. It's got a lot of those little thingies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carnivine, They're yeah. not tentacles because tentacle is very specific. Tentacle means it ends in a, uh, it means it needs to have suction cups along the whole thing. Right, and Carnivine is Gen 4, not Gen 5, right? Yeah, it is. It's Gen 4. Awesome. Found yeah. in the Great Marsh and it's a pain to get. It's a lot easier to get in, uh, it's it's much easier to get in Harkold Soul Silver than it is to get in Gen Four, like right. the basic games, because there it was only a sometimes encounter and like a really low encounter in the Great Marsh that was the only place to get it. Uh, but you could use Sinnoh Sound in Harkold Soul Silver to get it semi consistently, even if it was only five percent. It was still a lot easier to do it that way. 
Nice. Why do I know that? I'm just <laughs> glad you do. Is that your final answer? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is Carnivine. Ooh. I saw that as an option, and I couldn't not because it's me. Is it bad <laughs> that when as soon as uh, Jushira said it's a plant, it went, it's probably a carnivorous plant, so I was trying to figure out which one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what led you to Victory Bell, too. Yes, I want to read its other... I want to read its other thing, too, that would have immediately gotten it to you if you could put one and one together. It's from Legends Arceus, and it says, Though this is a plant Pokemon, it has a gluttonous and unruly temperament. It attacks its prey with its cavernous maw wide open. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't like that. Mm-hmm. Love it. That is the Pokedex entry. Y'all are doing great. No problem so far. No hint needed. So, awesome. Okay. Now for a complex question. Hmm. Because they've all been so simple up to now. Yep. And this one's the multi-choice where you submit multiple answers. So, what four Pokemon have a branched evolution which can then evolve again? So I'm looking for the base Pokemon, the basic, right. that has a branched evolution and then that evolves can one more time. evolve again after that branched evolution. Do Mega Evolutions count? No. Okay. This is straight... Regular evolution, and there are four, as I said. Right. Applin, okay. Wormpole. Yeah. Good. Those are two. Very good. Um. Um. Oh uh, yeah, you already said Wormpole. Ba ba ba. Uh, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be Cosmo because that doesn't go into two different Cosmo. Right. Um. Basics that split and can evolve again into different ones. Insert Pokemon that had some of it's gonna. One of them at least has to be a gendered evolution split. Um, I will give you that it is not. Oh, okay. However, there might be a region name in front of it. Oh. No oh, way. uh, Mr. Mime. Mime Jr. Very good. Mime Jr. is one of them. And you've got one more. Um, same hint. That isn't a hint, quote-unquote. Applies. It has the same basic. This one's really, this one's really debatable, in a sense. Uh, oh, no, no. Galarian Zigzagoon. No. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But Galarian Zigzagoon if, if is a completely Mime different counts, Zigzagoon. Galarian Zigzagoon does. Well, no, because yeah. Mime Jr. is the same Mime Jr. and it evolves into a I different guess. Mr. Mine, right? So they need yeah. to have the same basic. They're all the Galarian line in the Zigzagoon case, right. so that is not one of them. Okay. Oh, there must be one. However, you're on the right train of thought. I feel like I have it in the tip of my tongue. Or in a corner in my brain that is just uh, trying to I'm avoid working me. now. My, I'm working my way through regional forms. Um, it has the Pikachu is the same Pikachu, but it doesn't have a, a second evolution. Just it's a little Raichu. Um, right. We have uh, Ratata doesn't count. Um, yep. Uh, Meow. Things Ooh, with three Meowth. stages. No Meow. Uh, no, no, no. Never mind Meow. They're all. You don't yeah, have they're all. Berserker again. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of things with three stages. That evolves weirdly. In Gumi! Gumi! There it is! Gumi! Because it's oh, the same yeah. Gumi, but in Hisui, it goes to the, the funny Sligu. I would have not remember that good work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a really complicated one that's like, wait, it's the same Pokemon, but yeah. it's not. So, that is all four of them. Huzzah! The, uh, the other question is very hard, so <laughs> I didn't want to do that one. All right. So for your final question, it's a base stat question. Of course it is. And both of these are interesting. I like where these base stat questions have begun going, where they're not just, which Pokemon's attack is the biggest? It's There's a little more nuance to it. So uh, let's see. For Jushiro's sake, let's go with some Gen 1-ing. <laughs> All right. Hand what Pokemon? Handicap here. Uh-huh. This is from Gigasaurus Games. What Pokemon with the runaway ability... <laughs> has the highest speed stat. So which Pokemon can run away the fastest? <laughs> okay, so... You have an innate hint because I said Gen 1-ing. Rapidash comes to mind. Yeah. Because it's got over 100. Right. Um, um, the only other Pokemon I can think of from Gen 1 that has Runaway is Raticate. And it's not as fast. And Otrio. And I don't know which one's faster. Ooh, the trio is fast. I don't know if it's faster than Rapidash. Um, I have a feeling that's a, it's a, it's got to be a narrow margin between them. Right. Uh, which... 
I'm going to think that the bird's probably faster. I got to say, yeah, let's go with, I, I, if some, somehow in my brain, I'm like, I think Dodrio is like a little bit faster than Rapidash. Because Rapidash right. is, I know Rapidash is over a hundred. Right. I don't know the base that, but <laughs> just you see my poor memory. Okay. You, I yeah. actually was slightly incorrect because you do have a hint. Um, uh, we'll use the hint then, yeah, because um, this Pokemon has uh, two. We'll go with legs. What? Oh, so Dodrio! <laughs> Congratulations, you got it. It's Dodrio. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about saying heads, but I'm like, no, that's too on the nose. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. because I had forgotten that there was one that was wrong up here. That was the letter question with the X's. So, all right. That is really good, though, overall. Very good job, guys. Yay. And that concludes trivia. I think that's, uh, what is that, extra six points for the two of you? I don't have access to the list of who's where, but I'm sure that changes the standings quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> So we'll get that documented here within the next ep- by the next episode, and we'll be moving on in this one though to the topic where we talk about lying about Pokemon. So we'll be right back. We have another review. This one is going to be from Spartan THX one one seven five stars, longtime listener, first and the first time I've ever written a review for a podcast. I first started listening to your podcast when driving to meet my girlfriend on the weekends when neither of us had to work. Since then, we've moved in together and become engaged. The both of us have been playing Pokemon since we were kids, and we have both listened to your podcast when traveling or working around the house together. We may not score too well on the quiz part, but we always enjoy the topics and conversation between the host and guests. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll thank you for that, and congrats on the engagement. If you would like your review read on the show, leave one, and it might be read. Until then, guys, we're going to kick it on over to the topic. And welcome back. Today's topic... Now that we kind of have all of them in front of us, and to our knowledge at this time, are not getting any more or any further explanation than we have, is a review of the Paradox Pokemon, with the inclusion of the new ones that dropped in the uh, Indigo Disc DLC portion. So, what do we think? Like, are they good? Are they bad? Is the concept cool? To, like, what kind of what kind of things and opinions do we have about? All of these paradox Pokemon. I'll let Linian start this time. Yeah, Linian, go ahead, because I know you've got strong opinions on a couple of them. I am well known for being the dinosaur person. I, like, not so much in Puckle, it doesn't come up that often, but like, <laughs> the last two magic decks I built were both dinosaur based. Yes, they were. I'm the fossil guy, because I've always loved fossil Pokemon, just, I know they suck. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even talking about just fossil Pokemon or po- like, I, I've read books. My, uh, oh, yeah. just about dinosaurs. <laughs> my fiance for Christmas got me a book that was called The Paleontologist because he's like, you're going to be into, into this. It, it was a mystery. That's, That's so funny. Same. I was always going to like the past ones, but the future ones, they're a lot of nothing to me. Just, yeah. I have frustrations with a lot of them. Some of the past ones I'm just not thrilled about. Gouging Fire just needed a beak and it would have been peak, but it doesn't, so he's actually just. Rating. We got extra point because that rhymed. He's kind of got a beak. Eh, not enough. D- d- what do you? How do you define a beak? Um. Okay. Let me. It's it. His whole face is flush, right? Sorta. Yeah. All they needed to do was have there be a bit more front stuff to actually look like a Triceratops beak or Styrenacus. It's it's really a Styrenacus or it's not a Triceratops. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to mention that. Not that I had to tell you, but telling the dear listeners who yeah. have not gotten a, a paleontologist and you book. <laughs> uh, what they need is like a little thing on the front that goes over the, the front lip, and it would have been basically yeah. perfect. Uh, I love Walking Wake. Walking Wake is one of my favorite Pokemon this generation. Coridon is one of my favorite cover legends of all time. Walking Wake is cool. Like, Walking Wake might have a chance to make it on my chart, depending on how I build with its card that's coming out soon, because that seems really fun. Uh, and it, it, it's very interesting mechanically. I think that the the past ones are broadly successes. I hate Scream Tail, but that's fine. It's not. <laughs> that's a personal thing. <laughs> I think the past ones are just. Eh. And not the past. The future ones are just. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> the choices that they made for the Pokemon were absolutely bang on. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Other than Iron Valiant, and to a lesser extent, like Iron Hands, I think. 
Uh, Iron Hands, Iron Valiant, and Iron Treads are three interesting kind of tweaks on the Pokemon that are uh, cool ways that their designs could be expressed in robotics, like the tread coming off a central thing. Right. Yeah. That doesn't look like Don Fan uh, directly, but the whole shape is unmistakable. Iron Hands turning into an arms character. Uh, yeah. Looks very different. Uh, Iron Valiant being a cross between two evolutions. Excellent. Iron Bundle doesn't look like anything other than a robot. Uh, they didn't animate Iron Thorns. <laughs> right. And Iron Jugulus is just Hydreigon with a filter. Yeah. And I'm disappointed by them. And honestly, the the Swords of Justice, very much the same criticisms. They just look like those Pokemon with a filter on. Yeah. Which is my exactly my same review. I mean, I've always, mostly always captured the, what, uh, you know, what you might call the secondary version, right? Not the gold, but the silver, not the red, but the blue. So I went with Violet in that tradition that I've always done. And I have to say that although for, uh, I play the game and like I, like you guys said, I mean, Violet is one of my favorites. Uh, it, it still is the first time I felt disappointment at the version that I got because I just felt that Scarlet got all the great ones, and we just got robot theme. And I think it was a huge uh, missed opportunity to just be a little bit more inventive with what you could have done. First, my whole expectations on these par- Paradox Pokemon, and I think I've said this before, is that I thought they were going to go with Cryptid more cryptic. I thought we were going to have much more like Blue uh, Blood Moon Uzzering. Right, I thought we were gonna we were gonna have like Bigfoot Pokemon, Chupacabra Pokemon. Like we're gonna bring all these weird cryptics that we don't know if they're real or not, and those were gonna be the Paradox Pokemon that, at the beginning when they announced it. So I was very excited because I love cryptics, right? Uh, I, I do not I do not think maybe Bigfoot Bigfoot exists, but it's fun to think about it. Um, so I was expecting more of that. If I said that outside, don't say that outside, Yushira. That's a hate crime in the state. Oh dear. I know I will be get I would definitely get punched here in the, if I say that out loud. But my point being exactly that that it's just so much. Uh, there was so much that they could do with these that could have been a lot more fun. And instead, uh, although I I the Scarlet uh, Paradox Pokemon are actually good in my opinion, Violet is just all of them are robot theme, and it's just at some point you just don't care and that's what's happening right now with these paradox from violet i just don't care about them at all i will say all of the ones from scarlet are just dinosaurs right it's just that they have more variation in it or just they're yep. old looking yeah exactly slitherwing's not a dinosaur no sandy shocks has a tail i love it <laughs> i mean so does brute bonnet it has a tail too which is really weird yeah exactly they're they're basically stretched over the dinosaur frame i love it they're great Right. To me, it looks less dinosaur and more like dinosaur plus like whatever period the mammoths would be. Yeah, like uh, that's the Pleistocene era. Right. Like Ice Age, like saber tooth tigers. Right. It's just prehistoric. And Sandy Shocks is a caveman. Like, that's what it is. I would have loved them for the violet. I would have loved them to go more like a uh, 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 green alien, right? Uh, one of those um, big eye gray aliens type yeah right or um an experiment like uh, uh, a cyber uh, uh chupacabra so something like like there's so many more things that you could when you think future you can actually think of that is not just robots right that's my biggest complaint it's like there's more things that you could you could make it future of people thinking space think space things right maybe made an a- an asteroid one exactly even if you're going hard on the robots, there are a lot of different eras of robots. Like, you could do the, the retro-futuristic Astro Boy style, or the... Exactly. The Star Wars 8, uh, 70s, uh, uh, futuristic 70s, uh, big buttons. <laughs> give, give me Robocop, Tyranitar, and Astro Boy, uh, Iron Bundle, and <laughs> give me a Nano Machine Pokemon. Right. I mean, there were so many things they could have done. And again, I don't want to sound so hateful because there is a couple of them. Like we mentioned, Iron Valiant is an awesome design. So is Iron Thorns, although I know that they, they barely animated it. Um, but other than those two, everything else is just I imagine I haven't even bothered getting the sword trio, the Musketeers um, at all. Kids, I just don't care. To be fair, it's difficult. <laughs> You have to catch 
all of the Pokemon available in the uh, Terrarium pre-upgrades, and then most of the starters before you can go and catch. Yeah. Right, but I told you what, if I, if I had Scarlet, Scarlet, I would be doing that for Raging Bolt alone, because it's my favorite. Right? Yeah. Bar none, my favorite one is Raging Bolt, uh, mostly because uh, I was a dinosaur kid as well, and uh, the Brontosaurus, the lizard, uh, the Thunder Lizard, that was my favorite dinosaur when I was growing up. And the fact that they made Raikou into one of those is just brilliant, uh, and I love it. It is, especially with Thunder Lizard. That's such a good... Yeah, so it's like, if I had Scarlet, I would be trying to catch all Pokemon just because I want Raging Bolt, but I have no intention of doing that for freaking Iron Crown, Iron Boulder, and Iron Leaves. Well, I already have Iron Leaves, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I get it while it's available in raids kind of a thing. Yeah, I I very much echo y'all's opinion where, like, the the past ones all have a different thing. Like, they're not from the same period. They look like just more old, more brutal versions of the Pokemon over different times and themes. Dinosaurs for a lot of them, but just older. The future ones, I don't know. It's Some of them, it, it's good. I like Nuclear Reactor Volcarona, which is Iron Moth. Mm -hmm. That's a fun one to me. And the fact that in battle, its wings tick so, like in time that's very good to me i love that so it's like a tempo just keeping keeping ticks going it's very fun there are little things like that like the fact that iron jugulus's whole entire head is um that pixelated screen instead of just the eyes that's fun iron bundle is just silly because he, especially with the extendo neck that's just dumb i feel like the violet ones had worse models and better animations minus iron thorns who just doesn't yeah, Iron Thorns is boring. I forget it exists. And I was excited for Iron Thorns because he reminded me of... Uh... And then the past ones had stronger designs and just mediocre animations, with the exception of Raging Bolt. Really? <laughs> oh, it's goofy. Uh, the t the cloud like whips out and flaps behind it dramatically as it uses electric moves. Oh, no. Um, Its whole head like whips down forward when it uses a physical attack. Very much Alolan Executor vibes. Yes, uh, with more restraint and dignity while still going full for the crazy. <laughs> I love it. Interesting. I was so excited for Iron Thorns. No, oh, yeah, sorry. I, I was just going to mention that I was excited for Iron Thorns because it reminded me of Mecha Godzilla. It's yeah. like a Mecha Tyranitar. It's like perfect, but yeah, it ended up being just boring. Yeah, really weird. Really weird choice on that one. I get it. Tyranitar is popular. But why make it bad? Right. It's so bad. Um, the other thing I'll mention, too, which just bothers me, is what are these? Like, uh, from a from a narrative perspective, what are these? Where are they coming from? Like, we had the theory for a long time that they were creatures created, at least internally. Thatch and I specifically definitely were thinking this. Uh, creatures created by Terrapagos from, like, dreams or imagination because of how Heath had that happen and all that stuff. He f fell asleep in Area Zero and all a bunch of things came up. But, like, people started seeing these things. How old is the Scarlet and Violet book that we see that Heath wrote? It's, like, 80 years old? Somewhere mm -hmm. around there. I'm. It, it, it's vague. Oh, I'm wrong. Wow, no, okay. I'm looking through it right now. I had, a, I had some impression that it was, like, only 80 years old. But, no, it's more than 200 years prior. So that lines up with what I was about to say, too, actually. Yeah, because it's, it's long enough that it, it's like 1800s-ish, early 1800s. And I was about to say that I thought, with the understanding that it was 80 years ago, that it didn't make sense that Poke Paradox Pokemon started appearing 200 years ago. Right. But, like, what what is going on with that? Where are they coming from? Did Heath build the time machine? I don't think so. Are they coming from the time machine? Yeah, debatably. What did Heath do? What did he turn on? What switch did he flip? What rock did he turn over? There's, there's also the, because everyone's like, oh, they're described in these magazines. Some people are like, ah, it means that they're fictional. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Just because, like, they've been getting out. Like, you fought uh, Great Tusk and Iron Treads earlier in the game. So it's entirely possible they had escaped, uh, and then articles were written about the escaped ones. Exactly. And, you know, articles that are made up fact that just from that, and they call them, like, Bigfoot Paradox cryptid kind of things oh yeah the scream tales a billion years old older than multicellular life yeah to me it makes a lot of sense that a, a like a scream tale breaks containment right it gets out 
Yeah, exactly. It gets forced back or it dies, whatever. Uh, someone hears about this and then this magazine writes an extremely wild article that isn't true about it. Sensationalizing it, yeah. I think a lot of the paradox, I think a lot of people understandably took those to be like veiled ways to imply it was fact. I think it's probably more likely in-universe sensationalism. But still, it's it's vague on whether they were actually time traveling or just dimension traveling or wishes come true. Yeah. But we do kind of go back and, if not talk to the same Sada and Turo, another one at a different point in time. So maybe it's multiverse. It's not super clear. They really left a, a little uh, up for interpretation. I forget. If you give him the book and if you go back into the below zero area, is the book different that's on the table? No. Uh, yeah. Um, but if you go, the fun thing is he gives you, uh, Sada Arturo, they give you their signed copy, right? Their personal copy. If you're going to talk to Arwen, <laughs> he doesn't recognize the handwriting. That's funny. That's depressing. I just think it's a fun little side note. Nor that he actually cares. Arvin's just a depressing character. Arvin's sad. And that leaves so many other questions like, how does he live anywhere? Where, what, where's, if he, both of his parents are gone and have been for many years, what's going on? Well, like, I mean, he can't have two parents. He's, uh, an, he's a Pokemon protagonist. As everyone knows, the parents of Pokemon protagonists are territorial. <laughs> Except in Gen, <laughs> uh, yeah. Except they're in Gen territorial. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why. That's why Norman has to stay in Petalburg. The men and women of war, <laughs> jellyfish. <laughs> Mom of war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, comedy is just how many circles can you draw? That's all comedy is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. It's interesting to see where they kind of imply either Pokemon went or are going in some ways. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, Raging Bolt doesn't make sense, ho oh because it came from a ho oh but it's got... A, I, I like seeing the long-necked Raging Bolt. Yes, it's supposed to look like a sauropod, but it does remind me of, like, if you ever go look up um, Place to Seen Horses, <laughs> they have obscene, like, giraffe necks. It's great. That's where they lost their their ability to breathe on the water. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And grew these long necks. Exactly. Raiko was a very aquatic <laughs> species for many years. <laughs> but it lost its ability to breathe on the water. <laughs> That's why it's electric. That's how it would harvest prey, you see. It travels in the water faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Suicune can run atop it. It's to get it's to get away from all the Raikos. Get away from it, yeah. Get away from the Raiko. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. A lot of people really do not like their names being so distinct and not Pokemon. Yeah. How do y'all feel? Uh, same thing. Scarlet, I can tolerate it. I hate that every single Violet version starts with Iron. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. The the Star the Scarlet ones, the Ancient ones, give some kind of impression of what the Pokemon is. Right. Like Bigfoot, right? Great Tusk. And unfortunately, the Violet ones also do the same thing because they're also <laughs> uh, monotone. Right, but Iron, Iron is not even the most advanced of the... <laughs> it's like the... Steel, we gotta go with steel. Uh, some other alloys, right? Like steel. Hello. <laughs> but they can't. The problem is they can't call it steel because then it's not steel type, and you, you've caused a an actual. You've lied to your player by mistake. True, but I mean, like maybe they would have done instead of just all iron. Maybe so. One one of them is called iron uh, steel. Uh, steel treads and the other one is called copper hands and the other one is called silver moth you know it's like instead of just all of them being iron they have their we have so many metals to choose from they could have used different metals to describe different ones well no in in japanese it's all tetsu it's all iron <laughs> okay so it's, it, what i'm also looking at just how these pokemon are named as just like one of the trivia fact things in different languages uh -huh. mm. And they have differences. Like in Japanese, Spanish, Italian, and German, along with all East Asian, 
Paradox Pokemon are all named with a single word. What? Yes, English but German all does have that the for iron. anything. In French, the Paradox Pokemon are named with two or three words hyphenated into a single name. Um, all future Pokemon have the suffix differ in their names. Huh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a secret. That's how German and French are for a lot of proper nouns. Like, like that would not be... That's very typical of the language. Um, Japanese all being one letter is... Uh, one word is, again, not unusual. Um, a lot of these are how you would do it in those languages to have the same effect as two capitalized uh, letters in English. Yeah, and I'm looking at the names. So this is a very interesting bit of... Uh, it's a cool thing to look at from a localization level. And like, how do you make these come across the same? Uh, but I don't want people going off and being like, they should have combined. It, it's no, they are doing their best to preserve the feeling of this being. Right, right. Uh, this name. I, I think they actually did a very good job in that. Yeah, I mean, no, the, the problem with the names is not a, it's not a translation issue. It's more out of the concept of it. Yeah. Um, some people really hated that they were two names and they weren't, like, a Pokemon. It, it, it wasn't, quote-unquote, like a Pokemon. And I didn't care at first. I think the longer I go, the more I think about these things coming back, I feel like it's gonna get weird at some point. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't- I think it was an interesting choice to make something that is so distinct, even the names don't quite line up. Right. Yeah. But it is kind of pointing at it as- because we see in um, the Blueberry thing, the, the DLC, when the rigid lady speaks about your Maridon or Coridon. I had Violet, so mine was a Maridon. And she's like, ah, oh, yes, your Aegeus is ready for flying. Because it made the Aegeus sound. So that's what the Pokemon's named. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but if people haven't seen and been close enough to these Pokemon to hear what their actual name is, their name is a description. Mm -hmm. So it makes a little bit of sense with how mysterious and how not seen these things are, that their names would just be how people are describing them until they get up to it and see that Roaring Moon's name is actually or how, whatever it says its name is. Because apparently that's where Pokemon names come from is what they say in, in the video games now, in a sense. So all just from that one interaction with the lady say, saying, oh, yeah, here's your sandwich for your uh, Agias. I th I think it's interesting because they, they're named like cryptids or like uh, they, they are named. Th these are not names that the Pokemon could have ever said. This is absolutely a a marker of how strange they are. They have not integrated into language. They have been named as phenomena. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it's very telling that the only ones that have common names are the ones that we spend the most time with, and presumably Sada and Turo did. And we named ourselves because of that whole paradox. Yeah, d please. What's the is that a glasses paradox? So the whole thing. Uh, what par I don't know what kind of paradox it is. If that's what you're. It's it, there's a specific kind of. Uh, I think it's a boot. I think yeah. I think it's a bootstraps paradox where s the thing ex somehow exists out of time. Because the person who quote unquote made it received it from someone who got it from them in the future. Yes, which is exactly what happened for us in the video game. Yeah. Because Arvin told us the name because that's what his parent called it. So when we meet parents ghost, we tell it it's we tell it, oh, this is named Maridon, and they're like, Oh, where'd you learn that? <laughs> from you as actually. <laughs> but he was calling it Iron Serpent, because that's its classification, if you will. Yeah, Iron Serpent and Winged King. Yeah, because all these Pokemon are their Pokemon classifications. That's all it is, actually, now that I think about it. Like, Donphan is the armor Pokemon, and Iron Treads is its classification, but its name is Roller Roller Da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the paradox about, like... I mean, that does have some time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Zawardo. The world. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maridon being named... Iron Treads has no weakness. Maridon being named by you, who gave it to the professor, who gave you the name, that's a infinite loop that's really funny that I like. <laughs> right. Sorry. It does add to the mystery, but I just want answers. I don't want more mystery. Dang it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing that Karidon is then Winged King Crimson. <laughs> Winged King... I love it. Because... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's even crimson. Uh, when the kind of crimson. <laughs> Winged King Crimson. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now I'm just imagining the the trainer as the small little face on the top of Dio releases iron treads. So here's a question, right? Uh so we've got the Ultra Beast coming out of Sun and Moon. Now we got the uh Paradox Pokemon coming out of Violet and Scarlet. Uh-huh. You know where I'm going with this. What do you think, guys? Is this a trend that Pokemon is going to continue on, giving us these batch of weird uh, 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 Pokemon that are technically not Pokemon or technically not from this timeline or technically not from this universe, whatever? I'm calling it. I'm calling it now. I'm calling it here on the record. One of the key features of Gen 10 is going to be the very clearly experimental feature of... Um, Jumping into your Pokemon and being that Pokemon out in the world for a little bit. Mm, okay. And the regional or whatever cool mechanic of Gen 10 will be if that Pokemon is left-handed or right-handed. Okay. Left-handed, bundle. Right-handed, Delibird. There it is. Okay. What? <laughs> that call is 50% true. <laughs> Fun. I know you're making a Quarks reference, but why? <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually not. I'm <laughs> just saying something stupid. I honestly have no idea. I thought you were going left and right, like like a matter and antimatter. Like, no, that would be fun. Actually, that would be cool. I see. I don't know if they're gonna do this. I, I think they'll probably do it at least one more time. I don't know when. I think the fact that Ultra Beasts and Paradoxes did not come out back to back. Right. Yeah. Every other tells me that they know this is an expensive form of design space. Right. Because, like, you can't do this every gen, or you're going to have massive piles of designs that are very hard to bring back. Right. The thing that I'll throw out here that's kind of similar is how it can tie into other aspects of the company as far as, like, selling stuff. Let's be real. Um, and it started back with the Ultra Beast and adding that Ultra Beast tag to a lot of the cards. And there were a lot of cool Ultra Beasts. There were Ultra Beast merch lines and things like that. And what's your favorite Ultra Beast is kind of a, a question that occurs. So what's your favorite Paradox Pokemon is a question that's also occurring. And now we've also got these Paradox cards in the TCG. We're getting a whole bunch more of them in the next set. Temporal Forces coming out soon. And that's something else that allows for a little bit more fun development. Like how most of these, I don't know how familiar you are with all the cool TCG stuff coming out, Jushiro, but that was kind of always your um, wheelhouse. And a lot of the cool new, coming up uh, ancient and future Pokemon that are coming out in the TCG thing have a lot of cool, inter interesting synergies with themselves as an archetype. Okay. For example, the the ancient Pokemon have an absolute ton to do with your discard pile, just in general, uh -huh. which is kind of a cool thing. Like the Sada attaches energies from discard, the ancient explorer guy discards things, the new roaring moon does a bunch of damage based on how many ancient cards are in your discard, the vessel discards something to search energy. Like it all has something to do with the discard pile. And all the future things have some kind of weird almost utility aspect to them. Like a little Swiss army knife in a Pokemon. So there's, it lets them do that kind of thing where it can kind of develop yeah, this Pokemon exists, but also it's part of this theme for this other merch line. Mm. Yeah, but I think the other thing that they did uh, next, because uh, they did the, the Ultra Beasts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there was Battle Styles, I guess. And it worked, is the thing. It worked enough. That's uh, Yeah, I don't think they'll need to keep doing it because, as you said, it worked enough. They just need something that splits that way, but yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. The one thing that's weird there is with battle styles and with ultra, well, with ultra beasts and um, the ancient future guys, like they're based on the video game. There's not a TCG exclusive of those. So the Pokemon that we have that have those tags are 100% determined like now just based on what's in the game. It's all trainers from that point forward. Like we'll all we'll maybe get another version of a scream tail with a different ancient tag on it that does a different thing, but they can't add more Pokemon other than like the EX splitting so that's a interesting restriction that they put on themselves you would think that all these restrictions are uh, they are uh pretty conscious of them you would think i uh, we would hope 
that they're pretty conscious and maybe leads to something in the future that they know what to do in the future. Just like they know that just like Megas. Uh, I I doubt that Megas and the Gi- uh, the G Max all these are gonna be gone forever. They might return, not necessarily, maybe not necessarily in a main game, but um, a stadium or a uh, you know something uh, other than ra- uh, ra- uh. so. The point being is that I just think that they should we should expect something to come out of them. I guess is where I was going with this. I uh, one thing the imagination theory that you guys saw that everyone had on the internet I really like that. I would have loved that to be something that they would have maybe done. I guess in Galar would have been a great way to do that instead of having uh, Galarian Rapidash um, being uh, just a regional me, a, one of those imagination Pokemon because it's a unicorn, same thing like a, a making a Charizard like one of those English dragons on four legs. That would be cool. Right. Uh, and there, cause, uh, Gyarados being that Chinese flying dragon, right? I, I wish. Well, it kind of is. Right. Which is already what it, what it is, but w- <laughs> it kind of sort of is. <laughs> right. But uh, like more, even more so, like make him fire flying instead of water flying and may put him, you know, make him look more like that. That would have been something really nice. I would have loved them to see, uh, cause we have so many imaginary animals, mm-hmm. uh, from fairy tales and whatnot that we could have used. Um, uh, but hey, there's still ch- there's still time. I think that's about where I'll call it. Yeah. But I want to end on you know a, a question that we've probably already inherently answered at one point. Let's go through and just say what our what our of the paradoxes what our favorite one is. So I'll start, and I'm I'm going back and forth a little bit on a couple. Both of them are on my chart as of right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna go with Iron Moth over Roaring Moon. I like Iron Moth more, and I liked it more at the beginning. Let, let's add an addendum. What's your least favorite as well? My least favorite? Okay. Uh, Thorns. Why? <laughs> Why? Why are you here? <laughs> oh, no, Jushiro. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jushiro. Oh, Linian, go. Uh, I think my favorite... I'm going to exclude Coridon because, yes, Cyclozar exists, but barely. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, it was... It was made with these in mind coming out. I just don't want to track. It was. Yeah. So, Crydon's probably my objective favorite out of them all. Ah, it's close. It's probably Walking Wake over Sandy Shock, but Sandy Shock's is so obscene and hilarious, it kind of shoots the moon to being one of my favorites. It's so funny. Right. You do love your goofballs, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think Walking Wake d- is slightly better to me. I love the Raptor build on it. It's great. I love the Raptor build on it. Ugh. It... It was it was the first time looking at a, a design because uh, we were wa- I was watching that on Pokemon Day with my fiance we were laying in bed watching because it was super early in the morning and um, it came out and I was just like Whoa. it was the first time I'd seen any of the paradoxes that instead of going oh that's a neat spin my jaw dropped I was like what is that <laughs> <laughs> sweet coon what did they do to you and why do I like it and why is it like how tall is it it's huge it's massive and I love that. 11 foot 6. Wow, that's not that's not raptor size. <laughs> no, it is raptor sized. It's like Oh wait, I guess that's from head to tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disney's dinosaur Carnotaurus. Yes, that is Carnotaurus size. It's perfect. Um my least favorite is it's probably Iron Jugulus. Fair. Yeah, that's good. I just don't they didn't even do much with the fact its heads are disconnected and that feels like a waste. That feels like an oversight, like, oh, shoot, I forgot to connect it in Blender. Whoops. <laughs> it feels like uh, someone made a really edgy version. I feel like I'm looking at the a- the, the dark uh, alternate universe of a dark alternate universe for the amazing digital circus, okay? <laughs> the one thing... That's not... It's not a compliment. The thing that I'll voice about Jugulus that is... I don't know if it's a plus or a minus... But for those who remember trivia facts, Hydreigon was originally going to be a tank. Yeah. In its like designing stage, and they changed it to a dragon hydra later, but they kept the tread marks on it as a kind of callback to it what it was being designed as in the Pokemon designing room. Oh. I wish that Jugulus was a tank. Yes, it's right there. It's right there, like it's in its lore. It kind of is a funny callback to people who know that lore. Like, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah. I was actually going to mention that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jushi. What- How about you, Jushiro? Well, you guys know already I said that it was uh, Raging Bolt. Mm-hmm. 
definitely my favorite. Uh, and my least favorite, I would have to say that it would be Iron Bundle. Um, I just I never like never liked or understood Teddy Bird. Um, and this is in the same realm as that. Uh, why do you exist? Um, yeah, I just don't like it. I, I would. I would agree with you if it didn't have some really funny animations. That's the only thing that saves it. <laughs> it's very Jack in the Box. It's very goofy. Wait, High Dragon fell in love with a machine, and that's that. That is the fake a culture article. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> silly. I'm just imagining someone in like the 19th, because like these would have had to come out between the two, right? I'm just imagining someone, some farmer in Paldea in the 1960s who just <laughs> when I think. <laughs> <laughs> spits in jug. Well, I think the dead thing fell in love with a robot and that thing it had a little Well, I'm just imagining him finding the body and just be like, uh Well what's this thing in my jiggy? Yeah. You know what? I was gonna make a joke about oh no, what have the Soviets actually done now, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was Spain, so they're going Okay, let's not let Franco find this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so that's where we'll call it. Tell us what y'all think of the Paradox Pokemon, what your general impressions are, and you know what? If we're wrong in three weeks and we're getting DLC 2 with a whole bunch more Paradox answers, so be it. I challenge you, Pokemon Company. Do it. Make us wrong. I challenge it. Tell us what y'all think of the Paradoxes. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? You've heard our opinions and our reasoning, so... Tell us why we're wrong. It's our favorite thing. From there, we are going to go ahead and hop on over to the Pokemon of the episode. We'll be right back. Poke of the episode. And welcome back to the Pokemon of the episode. This week, we've got the Short King. Pokemon number 1022, Iron Boulder. The Paradox Pokemon, to no one's surprise. Yeah, it's Scarlet Pokedex Entry states, It resembles a Pokemon described in a dubious magazine as a Terrakian that had been modified by an evil organization. And it's Violet Dex Entry is just boring. Yeah. It was named after a mysterious object recorded in an old book. Its body seems to be metallic. Yeah. From Violet. I, I, what the heck? I don't, yeah, I don't understand these Paradox Dex Entries. I think yeah. I think what it is is with the the book the game that you're playing no one else is supposed to know about them so why would there be any information and then in the opposite version uh, instead of going and saying there's nothing known they wanted to give like something kinda so they made it something that was probably a lie I feel right. like that it's has to be that yeah because it when you're going through the the library do you see opposite version Pokemon no you don't you only see your own. Your own? Okay. Yeah, so this Like is, when you're clicking is, books through the library? Yeah, this is context that you would not... You have no context for these Pokemon other than the dex entry you get. Interesting. Which, that's so weird. Well, of these Pokemon, yeah, of course. But, like, if I'm in my Violet version clicking through the books, I'm not going to see something about Screamtail, am I? No. No, it's only my version. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think was thinking that, it, I think that's it because... kind of goes back to the... Um, the whole like sensationalizing the the idea of this Pokemon as opposed to you holding it and being like, yep, its body is metallic. Uh-huh. It kind of looks like it might be in a book. But yeah. the opposite version, which has no reason to see it, is like, it was made by an evil team and it was a robot Terekian. Yeah, yeah like, Dexes were giving it, the most accurate information available. If no information it, exists, it's going to give the basic... Exactly. This it's, is what it it's, is. It's, Versus right. even to the dex entry, it's pointing at these things being like fake sensationalized. But it's the only context that it has. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe. That's not about Iron Boulder, though. Yeah, <laughs> we're Iron getting. Boulder. So remember how Terrakion uh, ran train on Gen 5? Ran what if they gave it 20 scarf? speed? Yeah. Yeah. Because this thing's got base 124 speed, which mm -hmm. is just stupid. And 120 attack to go with it, which I think is less than regular Terrakion. I think it's Terrakion's like 127 for attack or something dumb. I'm looking at it. It's 129. I was close. Um, but yeah, I mean, b between that and booster energy existing and you just become a choice scarf 124 base speed monstrosity. Right. Mm -hmm. It's seeing a lot of success in OU right now. Of course, OU is kind of a 
monstrosity in and of itself, just <laughs> with all the monsters that are there. And people seem resistant to ban anything, which is causing problems. Seems to be a topic, uh, <laughs> a general issue of our era. Future. No one was- right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this thing is really good with the booster energy set. Just hop in, get a bunch of speed. Do a lot of damage with your cool coverage. Being psychic is kind of a bummer because Sucker Punch exists, and when King Gambit's the number one thing in the tier, mm. that's a bummer. Yeah. It does have something that very few other rock types do have. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which is a 100% accurate rock type physical attack. Yeah. I don't think there is another. Oh. If I'm being honest. Uh, Accelerate. There are. They're just not good. Um, It's like Smackdown. Uh, Acceleroc, Salt Cure, Smackdown, that's it. Yeah, like I said, none of them are good. Those are the 100% accurate physical rock moves other than this. And Smackdown, base 60 power, we're not doing that. Mighty nope. Cleave, <laughs> however. Unless Mighty Cleave is 95, so we will do. We will be doing that, yes. That's better than, I mean, you're losing, what, 5 power off Stone Edge to go through Protect... Yeah, I forgot it does that. Oh my gosh. You go through Protect, have a 100% accurate rock move, and also, hilarious, it's not that it matters, but it is boosted by sharpness. Yeah. Wow. I forgot that it goes through Protect. Oh my gosh. I got this confused with one of the other moves that was stupid. Hyper Drill? What is Hyper Drill? Also goes through Protect, that is uh, Dunsparce's Duns- move. Dunsparce's signature move. I didn't even know. Outside of wow. uh, the... That how's the card looking for our good friend there? <laughs> it is a card. <laughs> it is, uh, of course, it's a fighting type. The only one that's coming out that we know of is uh, the EX that's coming out in Temporal Forces, and it's about one of the worst cards I think that you could pull from from this set. Oof. It's it's a fighting type basic, of course, with two hundred and forty HP. It's got that future tag on it, so that enables a whole bunch of things like damage modification from iron crowns the ability for that cool new ace spec to attach an energy to it so there's something fun that you can do with it but it's just not worth it it's got a single attack repulsor axe for 60 damage for fighting colorless it during your opponent's next turn if it's damaged by an attack even if it's knocked out put eight damage counters on the attacker so that's sort of cool it's kind of like the old uh oh my gosh arc uh drake Drake Assault card, the Drake Assault VMAX that did similar things, but you don't have to evolve it. And then the other attack is just fighting, fighting, colorless, 200 damage, discard 2 energy. Very odd yeah. and bad. Underwhelming. Underwhelming. That's a better word than bad. That's much more nice. <laughs> but yeah, I am not that's a, whelmed. I am not enthused. I do not plan on putting it in anything except maybe a meme Mm-hmm. Terra Garchomp to say, deck. I'm not going to put it in anything other than a trade binder. <laughs> yeah, that's. But a, a Garchomp deck like that is the only thing I could even think of. I don't even think it fits in the future box kind of archetypes because it's just why 200 is not a look. I mean, of course, it can't fit in the future box thing. It it's a past book. Po- uh, no, sorry, I was thinking of burning a uh, couching fire. For you're something. thinking something. Yeah, you're thinking gouging fire. I don't know. <laughs> Gouging Fire just keeps chasing it out of my brain. <laughs> Gouging Fire is way better, both in card and... and well, apparently it's, it's not... territorial. <laughs> yeah, it's territorial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. That's it. I do like how, for the uh, sword specifically, the little energy lines can expand out and become like swords or for Terrakion, it becomes a giant shovel in front of its face, like a snow plow. Yeah. That's really cool to me. It looks, I mean, given it's repulsor axe, the first thing that I thought when I was looking at it was, was axe blade. Cause they're all weapon things. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, cause we've got boulder and then crown crowns whole, like they just become like kind of scythe things. And then yeah. who could forget the absolute insanity <laughs> That is Verizian's horn just <laughs> right, <laughs> becoming a yeah. knife out of its forehead. Yeah, that one's a weird one. That one always kind of was. It is kind of what they do in the movie, though, isn't it? Where it just kind of extends out with magical Pokemon energy. Pokemon key. <laughs> yeah. Iron Boulder from the three 
um, Musketeers. It's definitely the best looking one, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like its bulky nature and that its uh, its little feet are kind of like uh, columns <laughs> of steel. It's mm-hmm. it's a well enough design. I mean, it's not terrible. That one's a robot. I'm okay with. Right, right. It's fine. Mm-hmm. The others are like a welding student really wanted to make a statue to commemorate Cobalion. Here's a future <laughs> Pokemon they could have done. Sorry, but not just, like here's a paradox the they could have done. Like, like you know, like the high school welding. This is part of his sophomore project. All right. Here, here uh, sorry to go back to the the, the paradox yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, future paradox Pokemon they could have done a Spirit Tomb, but instead of being Spirit Ooh. Energy. It's fusion core. It's it's a few fu- it, yeah like you know a, a cold fusion or something cold fusion spirit or, tom yeah uh, have it be ice and and ghost or whatever. It's better than my idea was going to be, which is be one of those little spinning electric displays. Also, like, <laughs> like you see, like you see people make for like desktop spirit tombs oh. that have the spinning <laughs> LED lights. Yes, that would have <laughs> been I great. When you said spinning electric, I was like, what a motorized fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, with with LEDs with on it. LEDs. That would have been so a funny many spirit they go. Anyway, sorry. Continue on. <laughs> that's a good idea, though. I like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's honestly there isn't much more to say about Iron Boulder for the most part. It's it is here. It's good in its own it swim is, lane. Yeah, it is a paradox Pokemon that exists. Exactly. Exactly. I I dig it. It's cool. It's fun. So yeah, that's Iron Boulder. Uh, Let us know what y'all think of Iron Boulder in the emails, which we're about to jump over to. Um, And yeah, that'll that'll do the Pokemon of the episode for now. (laughs) Goodbye, Terrakion, but corrupted by an evil team. We'll hear about you next week in the emails. So with that, we'll jump over to it and we'll see you on the other side. Be right back. It's mail time. It's time for the mailbag. Sending your emails. And welcome back to the mailbag, the part of the show where we read listener emails. And if you've got responses that you want to give to us, you can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. And y'all know the questions that we've got for you this week. But last week's was a retrospective on the Pokemon Legends Arceus game. First, this segment has been brought to you by... The fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves. And I'll go ahead and start us off. Why not? I've got an email from Nico. They say, hey, Puckle Gang, it's Nico again. I could easily write an essay about Pokemon's Legends Arceus, but I'll make an effort to narrow down my scope for everyone's sake. Let's just talk about battle mechanics. I've heard a lot of criticism towards the Legends battle system, namely that it should just adopt the current mainline battles. But can't we just give them a chance? We did, and it sucked. (laughs) (laughs) If we compare the PLA to Gen 1, it's easy to grasp how an early system has room to grow. If Pokemon Legends becomes a series, we should expect to see profound improvements in the battle system. After all, let's not forget that the physical special split took about a decade to happen. I also think that Legends games need to have distinct mechanics to differentiate from mainline games. If Final Fantasy can do different systems at once in their franchise, like an action RPG and a traditional turn-based, then Game Freak can pull it off successfully too. That's real bold calling there <laughs> that successful. I'm just gonna, gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a thought. Uh, moving on. After saying all that, I'm going to be a hypocrite because there are some older mechanics I'd like to return in the next game. First of all, we need multi target attacks. In PLA, we were able to kite multiple wild Pokemon into battle at the same time, something unique to that game. But instead of being fun and special, it was just frustrating that we had to attack a single Pokemon at a time. It would be nice to see attacks like Surf return. Even in a hypothetical situation where non-target Pokemon take less damage, I'd still be happy. That's a good idea. I like that. Kind of makes it real world, too. I just don't want to play bad games for nine years until they get the formula right when I could play good games for nine years. (laughs) 
Uh, second, can we get abilities, please? I understand that many abilities don't work with the Legends battle system, but here's an idea. Just make new abilities. Maybe it seems like a lot of work, but I doubt making abilities for under 250 Pokemon would be much more work than when abilities are first made in Gen 3, which had 386 Pokemon. And, like, five abilities. <laughs> To be fair, there was abilities in Legends Arceus. I'll throw that out there. It was just one, and it was Regigigas. But they're in there. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, wrapping up here. Let me know what you would like to see in the next Legends game. Maybe double battles? And while you're at it, what region do you think it'll be? Alternatively, do you think we'll see another Legends game at all? Always fun to share my thoughts and hear yours. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Nico. So, what do we think, y'all? My wish list for uh, Legends Arceus is just a better environment. Yeah. The thing is, like, Pokemon's base game still worked fine. Like, it was buggy, I guess. But it was improving it by making it more interesting and giving you more to do. This one didn't work because I died too fast for there to be back and forth. It was good as in it was punishing. You didn't want to fight. In fact, you became, how do I not battle this Pokemon and catch it? which let you focus on those mechanics. But also it meant that the Volo fight just wasn't fun. Anytime you fought a trainer, it was who had more Pokemon or more healing items. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Especially being able to double turns, you just killed them. It was just back yeah. and forth knockouts. Yeah. To me, it just wasn't intuitive. I didn't know what my effects would have on the battle compared to the other effects as far as like being able to even move. Hiding the turn track unless you hit a button was a terrible mistake. Yeah. But that is Nico. So, Jushiro, how about, what do you have? From Timmy C. What's up, Puckle Crew? Timmy C here. As someone who has grown up with the Pokemon franchise, Legend was a Pokemon game that I definitely was, as Sublime said, a breath of fresh air. It was nice that it, I could enjoy something from this franchise that wasn't the standard being there done that formula. This is not me dunking on the original forma, kinda. There's a reason why it has lasted so long and sells so well. But taking that formula and adding new mechanics for a type of game that actually rewards critical thinking... Mm, I don't know about that. Hmm. Positioning and strategy really did pay off. Yeah, I don't know anything about all of that. Catching Pokemon is far more rewarding since it's now more than just a button input. Gathering materials for crafting is so fluid since you literally can do it while uh, you're moving fast or slow. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. The battle system needs a little tweaking. And it wasn't difficult for me to figure out, but it did annoy me when my opponent is doing something three times in a row. And it was just just waiting for them to finish. The lore of Gen 4 was always my favorite thing about this generation. Giving my favorites like Giratina substantial presence, albeit post-game. Is in the story was fantastic. I also agree that having a BDSP to release before Legends made me more hype for its debut. Hot take, BDSP is good, it just didn't have the right crowd to enjoy it. I mean, it's as good as Gen 4, which arguably is good, but, you know, it's an old game now. Overall, yeah. I would like to, uh, I would like another Legends games, but my second hot take, don't do it in Unova. I don't like Pokemon's teenage year generations and having a Legends style game from this generation wouldn't be exciting. Do Legends Johto instead. Thanks for the awesome work you do. Until next time, Team EC. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, I'm tired, honestly, of Johto and Kanto. Um, <laughs> yeah, same. I, I never liked Johto too terribly. I much. like Johto. I mean, uh, Golden, uh, Golden Silver was my, my favorite of the old school games, but, um, I want more, I want Unova, right? It's a different region. It, it, they could do a lot with it. I would say I would much rather, uh, see how Unova is in the past than, than Johto. All of a sudden it's in the future and everything's a robot. See, I was not ever a big fan of Black and White in Gen 5. I still think Unova is the next obvious choice. Not only because it's the next in order, but there's a story there that hasn't been done and you could do stuff with. Right. I don't know. I just think all you have to do to make Unova better is like do the decks more like Black and White 2 and then add a couple of new Pokemon from later generations that could do a Unova firm. Right. That would actually tie Unova back in a lot better. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I mean, that there's just so much more they can do to Unova. 
it just makes it more of an empty canvas for them to work on. I still want to see Kalos. Like, completely skip over all those together and give us Legends Kalos. And we're in AZ's army or something like that. I don't know what that could be. But that would be that's a world that's already established as a past story that we could go and expand to. Whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know. But it's an idea. And it's interesting that pretty much all the version legendaries made it into Scarlet Violet, except Xerneas and Eveltal. Mm. Which is very odd to me. <laughs> How many years was it from Legends Arceus to to present day? Yeah, it was two years ago this January. No, in lore, so... sorry, in lore timeline. Oh, in lore, eighteen hundreds. I want to say it was. It was not as long as people are thinking. Is the thing right? So, do you yeah. imagine like a Wild West style Legends in Unova? I think we've talked about that before. Yeah, that would be fun. Like something Wild Westy. Right. Put a mechanic that is uh what how you call it, the the when you shoot from the hip. Um Yeah. Yeah. That would be fun. There's potential all sorts of places with things like that. I was looking over Hisui. Uh so it says Hisui is a clear analogue for Azo, the earlier name of Hokkaido. Hisui becomes Sino, the same way Azo became Hokkaido. There was a foothold established in the fourteen hundreds, however, that was basically the status quo up until like the eight. So up until the uh, 1700s. Mm. So it could have been anywhere in that time period. Yeah, but it says, assuming Pokemon history is roughly analogous to our own, this would place, this is uh, from a deleted user on Reddit, but given the other stuff and their sourcing stuff as they go, uh, it says it was in 1869 that Azo became Hokkaido and they built the building, the government office, which clearly looks like Galaxy Hall. In ah. 1869. Oh, okay. So they're saying this is probably given given that in the clothing that people are wearing. It's probably somewhere around there. That makes sense. Neat. Yep, I think we got one more email, so take us away, Linian. We have an email here from <laughs> Cole. What's up, Thatch and co-host Batch? I like that. I like that a lot. I've been playing Pokemon since 2002, with my first game being Pokemon Yellow. Played every mainline game since and watched the Pokemon name grow. I'll say after 22 years, Legends Arceus quickly became one of my top three Pokemon games. It was such a nice breath of fresh air. It did a lot of things great, but of course there were some misses as well. But let's start with the good. First off, the whole vibe of the Pokemon is beautifully crafted. The landscape, people, sounds, and I just can't praise it enough for that. The nature ambiance paired really well with the music, and every now and then you'd hear a Pokemon. The Pokemon themselves also felt like living beings wandering the environment, taking a moment to see sleep, sit, smell the air around them, and react to your movements and sounds. It really helped with the immersion. Then there were the nobles. I love the way they tackled the boss fights in the game, with needing to dodge and throw satchels to battle them. They were all unique in how they played and had their own challenges. They were actually kind of difficult as well, with Asui and Avalog being the hardest for me, not counting Arceus. Mm. I understand why for lore reasons, but I wish we could capture the nobles and have them with a special title saying who they are. Like Avalog the Frozen Noble, or Lilligant the Nimble Noble. It's the noble of the, she is the lady of the ridge. That is her title. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that the other characters felt really real. They felt like they belonged. They had they all had a purpose and they all had really well done designs. Even ran, random townsfolk NPCs. I also love that we were the mediator and turned everyone's fears of Pokemon into love and understanding. Except for Paris, that guy really wanted to throw hands, no matter how freaking far away you were. Oh my god. Yeah, Paris needs to chill. Carnivine too, yeah, they were nuts. Uh, the game also just felt good to play. Everything was super smooth, and the transitions into the overworld of battle were great. I love that you could literally run from battles. I personally never had any performance issues while playing it. I While I feel Scarlet and Violet, my Switch goes to life support when it starts to rain. Yeah. They had the shiny sound notification. Thank heavens for that. Bring that back, please. I don't want to make this too long, so get into the negatives. First thing, I wish there were more trainer battles, and a people in the wild, such as gatherers or fishermen or miners. It was nice to see the town and the little diamond and pearl villages, but... I'm sure they still go into the wild. Also, the, a the battle mechanic was absolute nonsense. It was literally, this move will knock out this other Pokemon, or do I want it to live? It was never explained how it would work, and even the turn shower on the HUD didn't help. A great example of this is when I fought Regigigas on turn 1, and I used two quick-style Iron Heads and a strong-style Crush Grip before I could attack. My weirder never stood a chance. Yep. I could go on, but I've rambled enough. Thank you for reading this, and for all that you do, sincerely, Cole just want to point out that you want more trainer battles. The reason they didn't is because the combat sucked, particularly against trainers with multiple Pokemon. Yeah. 
And everyone thought his Pokemon were scary, so. Yeah, so they wouldn't they didn't have a reason to catch them. Alrighty, well that's it for Legends Arceus recap, I guess. I guess since who was it? Uh whose did you read, Jashiro? Because that one ten, that one sparked the most conversation among us, so. Timmy C. Timmy C? Yep. Well then, as the substitute co host, I dubbed the Green Tauros Badgehead. <laughs> so Woo. Woo! We should probably pick a topic for the emails to respond to. Yes. <laughs> That's going to be what did you think yep. about, uh, I almost said Ultra Beasts. Wow. Uh, Paradox Pokemon. <laughs> What did you think of Paradoxes? Yep, that is the email topic for next, because that's what our topic was. That's the email for next week, so you can email that to pucklepodcast at gmail.com. We'll read those out and look for your emails in the other uh, unread emails chat. We do go through all of them. We love hearing from y'all, so definitely send us that way. We're also doing a whole bunch of other things. I know that Thatch has been putting up uh, kind of infographics in the discord server of what kind of things are going on each week so definitely look out for that if you want to know when we're doing something like a twitch stream or things of that nature and on that note we're on twitch we're on youtube we're on twitter we're on all sorts of things so keep your eyes out for us among your favorite social media apps and most importantly hop onto that discord because that's where a lot of this magic happens that's where we hang out you can help us farm blueberry points if we need to so Love to have you there, and I think that about covers... Oh, the Patreon, too, if you'd like to support us directly. Then in that case, from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, I have been Seth Vilo. Some say I've been Jashiro. And I've been Territorial. <laughs> and I've been Territorial! <laughs> oh no, Jashiro, that means we You're have right. to leave. Bye. All right, sorry. I'm here in the Lavender Town Radio <laughs> Tower. It's closing time. <laughs>